the capital market line. The best portfolios are efficient portfolios. Portfolios that provide the highest expected return for a given amount of risk and the lowest risk for a given expected return. Let's identify the best portfolios in the investing universe. In risk and return space, we plot the risk and returns of portfolios containing all possible combinations of risky assets in the universe. We obtain a cloud in space called the investment opportunity set. Some portfolios are better than others. At this level of risk, this is the best portfolio. This is the efficient portfolio at this level of risk. At this expected return, this is the best portfolio. This is the efficient portfolio at this expected return. The best portfolios, the efficient portfolios, are found on the upper edge of the investment opportunity set, moving towards higher expected return and lower risk. This set of efficient portfolios is called the efficient frontier. The efficient frontier defines the set of all efficient portfolios. Rational investors only invest in efficient portfolios. Rational investors will not invest in portfolios that lie below the efficient frontier. We've only considered a universe of risky assets and portfolios of risky assets. Now let's introduce a risk-free asset into the universe and the possibility to lend and borrow at the risk-free rate. A risk-free asset pays the same return in all possible future states of the world. Its standard deviation is zero, so its probability distribution is a spike at the risk-free rate. It has no dispersion. Its correlation with any risk investment is zero. Given the expected return in standard deviation of risky asset A and the return in standard deviation of the risk-free asset, let's form a portfolio by putting 50% of the portfolio in risky asset A and 50% in the risk-free asset. The expected return is an average of the expected return of the risky asset and the expected return of the risk-free asset. We multiply the portfolio weight of risky asset A to its expected return and the portfolio weight of the risk-free asset to the risk-free rate. The expected return of the portfolio is 10%. Given our formula for the variance of a two-asset portfolio, this term goes to zero because the standard deviation of the risk-free asset is zero. This term goes to zero because the covariance of risk-free asset and risky asset is zero. So the variance of our portfolio is equal to the portfolio weight of A squared times the variance of A. The standard deviation is a positive root of the variance. We multiply the risky asset's portfolio weight to its standard deviation and get the standard deviation of the portfolio, 10%. Now let's note that this portfolio standard deviation is a simple weighted average of the standard deviation of the risky security and the risk-free asset, where the standard deviation of the risk-free asset is zero. Therefore, the risk and return combinations are found on a straight line running from the risk-free asset through the risky asset. This is lending or investing in the risk-free asset because it's a present cash outflow and a future cash inflow. Now suppose we wanted to extend our risk and return opportunities beyond a point defined by portfolio A. We can do that by borrowing at the risk-free rate 
and increasing our investment in the risky asset using the proceeds from the loan. This would increase our expected return, but also increase our risk. We can borrow at the risk-free rate through a transaction called short selling. Short selling is borrowing a security and selling it with the intent to repurchase it at a later date and return it to its owner. Let's assume the risk-free rate is 6% and we sell short $1,000 of the risk-free asset. In one year, we repurchase the risk-free asset for $1,060 and return it. The 6% return is certain because it's risk-free. So we know that in one year, the purchase price of the asset must be 6% higher, $1,060. This is a borrowing transaction. We receive the proceeds of the loan, and at a later date, we return to principal with interest. So we can borrow at the risk-free rate for a short selling transaction. Let's form a portfolio by borrowing an amount equal to 50% of the portfolio by selling short the risk-free asset and investing the proceeds in risky asset A, increasing the investment in A to 150%. The expected return on the portfolio. The portfolio weight for the risky asset A is 1.5. We have 150% of the portfolio invested in risky asset A. The portfolio weight for the risk-free asset is negative 0.5 because we borrowed an amount equal to 50% of the portfolio by selling the risk-free asset short. The expected return of the portfolio is 18%. We multiply the portfolio weight of risky asset A by standard deviation and get the standard deviation of the portfolio, 30%. So we formed a portfolio on a line beyond point A. The risk and returns of portfolios consisting of the risk-free asset and a risky asset are described by a straight line running from the risk-free rate through the risky asset. Let's form portfolios consisting of the risk-free asset and this portfolio of risky assets on the efficient frontier. The risk return combinations are described by a straight line running from the risk-free rate through the risky portfolio. These portfolios lying below the line are no longer efficient portfolios. They have lower expected returns for a given standard deviation. So by introducing a risk-free asset, the shape of the efficient frontier is changing it's becoming linear. We can form more efficient portfolios as we move up the efficient frontier. The best portfolios are obtained from a straight line from the risk-free rate to a point tangent to the upper surface of the efficient frontier. Let's call the portfolio at the point of tangency portfolio M. We now have a new efficient frontier that's linear and consists of efficient portfolios constructed from only two assets, a risk-free asset and a risky portfolio, M. This new efficient frontier is called the capital market line. The capital market line traces the efficient set of portfolios formed from both risky assets and the risk-free asset. Each point represents an entire portfolio consisting of the risky assets in Portfolio M and the risk-free asset. Well, what is Portfolio M? Assuming homogeneous expectations, where all investors have the same beliefs concerning returns, variances, and covariances, all investors will naturally hold the same Portfolio M, and that portfolio is the market portfolio. The market portfolio 
is a valuated portfolio containing all the investments in the investing universe. Investments such as stocks, bonds, mortgages, collectibles, even investments in human capital, such as college degrees. This result establishes what financial economists call the portfolio separation principle. The principle states that assuming homogeneous expectations, rational investors make two separate decisions. All investors invest in the market portfolio. Regardless of their personal attitude towards risk, all investors invest in the same risky asset, the market portfolio. Having made their investment in risky assets, investors then borrow and lend at the risk-free rate to obtain their desired level of risk.